Now it's exactly seven o'clock, brother. So we're gonna give a minute. Brothers, good evening. Yeah, what's up? Good to see you, man. You in your preacher's office? <laughs> Double salute you, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, how are you? Doing well. I'm online right now as we speak, sir. All right, we are, appreciate you all okay. being here tonight. All right. <clears throat> We're not going to prolong the time. Those that are coming will join us, and they'll just have to get in where they fit in. Uh, I see that the, my brother Brown is on here. And uh, Brother Brown, we are going to ask you, uh, if you don't mind, opening up with a word of prayer. What happened? Yeah, there you go. You're, you're good now. You asked me to pray? Please do. Okay. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we, we come before you tonight in Jesus' name, just thanking you and worshiping your name, God. We pray that you continue to bless us and keep us through all the things we have to do <clears throat> and do on a daily basis. Now, God, we pray that everyone get whatever <clears throat> you need for them to get out of this meeting tonight and so that we can do your will even the more. These and other things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Brother Brown is also one of our council meet leaders. Um, so all you men get to know him. He's one of those that you want to uh, reach out to if you got some questions re re related to the men's department. Uh, we're also going to ask, and I think, oh, there it goes, another one of our council members to go ahead and, 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 and uh, introduce our speaker and also give you guys a welcome. So we're going to ask the uh, adjutant of our pastor, uh, Greg, Greg Porter, master barber, y'all. So if you need your hair cut, some of y'all do, uh, <laughs> he's the man you want to reach out to. Go ahead, Brother Porter, go ahead. And uh, we don't want to prolong our, our, our service, but we want you to go ahead and introduce our presenter for this evening. You're on mute, sir. You're still on mute. All right. There you go. How about that? That's better. Welcome, everybody. This is the biographic of Elder T.H. Scott III. Elder Scott served in the United States Air Force for 18 years in total as the first African historian. In 1986, he received an assignment to Germany where he became president of the Toastmaster International. Doing, hold on, hold on. Oh God, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta go into the uh, other part of it. Hold on just one second. I apologize for that, my phone acting up. Hold on, there we go.
Now let's do this the right way here. Okay, let's let me start up the biography of Elder T. H. Scott III. Elder Scott served in the United States Air Force for 18 years in total as the first American African historian. In 1986, he received an assignment to Germany where he became president of the Toastmaster International. During, during that time, Elder Scott began pastoring and established churches all over Europe. With God leading, years later, he became a member of Holy Bethel Church of God in Christ in 2013. In the 2016, he was licensed as a ordained as a elder, uh, ordained, he was ordained and elder, I mean, an elder Bishop Norman O. Harper under the capable leadership of pastor, Dr. Roosevelt Allen Jr. and co-pastor Rosetta T. Allen. He currently the founder of the Food for Thought online network and has authored four cookbooks. Each week he prepares hard, healthy meals and teaches on the health benefits of food that we eat. Lastly, he believed that his greatest accomplishment in life is to simply be called a servant of the most High God. I guess he turned it back over to me. Okay. I turned it back over to Elder, Elder Scott. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen. Uh, one thing I realized, and I'd like to say good evening to each and every one of you that are joined in today. This is our, our fourth Thursday uh, Men's Fellowship, which is a series that we do which is called There's a Man in the House. And today I've been asked to be the speaker by our pastor, Dr. Roosevelt Allen Jr. And I just want you to know, it's an honor to be in front of all of you, which I consider you all as great men of God. And I mean that sincerely. Sometimes when God gives us a call or when God gives us an assignment, we tend to many times try to look in ourselves and try to find what is it that God sees in us. And I assure you of this one thing, what he sees in us is what he left to us, which is the Holy Spirit. That is what makes us good. That is what qualifies us. And that is what keeps us, leads us and guides us into all truth. So again, I'm so happy to be here this evening to be able to just talk just for a little bit with you all. Uh, today, um, I really believe God has given me a word for the men. And this is not just the men at Holy Bethel. This is for any man that calls upon the name of the Lord and desires to be used by God. There's some very intricate things that I believe that God wants to do with us and wants to tell us tonight. So tonight's topic that I'll be speaking on is just simply these two words, man up. That's it, man up. Now, if you all don't mind, I like to do, when I'm teaching, I like to do interactive and I like to be able to uh, ask questions just like you all will be able to ask questions also. And I never try to ask questions to trip people up. Uh, how I generally will teach, I teach in what's called loops. In other words, I go a little bit forward and then I want to go and loop back to make sure you all got good understanding and then and make sure that I'm teaching correctly. And then I'll go forward a little bit further and loop around again and make sure that I'm asking questions to make sure you understand. Then I'll continue to go for, forward from there. And then by the end of this lesson, we all should have a good understanding. So we have already the title, Man Up. When we hear this title, Man Up, what does it make you think about, uh, Minister Corey Watts? What does it make you think of Man Up? Uh, when I hear Man Up, it makes me think like, get your stuff together, get yourself in order. 
Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, get it together. Get yourself in order. Uh, Elder Billinger, what does it make you think of? You hear this terminology, man up. Man up means standing up in your rightful place, in your rightful position, doing the things that you need to do to make sure that you are not only leaving legacy just for yourself, but leaving legacy for your family and those that are um, following behind as well. Absolutely. Very good. And thank you so much, both of you, for sharing. Man up, making sure that we're doing what we are called to do. And since we're in the we're dealing with a platform of for the things of God, making sure that we're doing what God has called us to do. We're living in a very unique time. And, and during this type of generations, we find a lot of people are always trying to find what is my purpose? What is my purpose? But believe it or not, the word of God tells us clearly what our purpose is. And if we will do what the word of God says to do, we will get the same results of what, the, what God did for the people in the Bible. So what I want to do today is, let me give you a definition of man up according to Webster. And then we're gonna go a little further. Man up means to make an effort to deal with a situation or situations by rising to the occasion. In other words, by finding ourselves busy doing what God wants us to do and what he has equipped us to do. So here, I want to uh, look at this here. Uh, there's a scripture that it's in the book of Daniel, the 11th chapter, verse number 32, and it's part B of that actual scripture. And this is what it says. But the people that know that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Well, one thing that we need to do more than anything else is learn and know our God. Why would you say, Elder, Elder Crane, why would you think it is important to know our God? If we, <clears throat> if we say that we are men of God, if we say that we are children of God, not only children of God, but men of God, then it's vital that we should understand and know who our God is. Mm -hmm. And because of what we believe and what we have, have read in the word of God, God being a man himself, we should know this type of man that he is mm -hmm. so that we should be, we could be able to emulate him step for step, prayer for prayer, stride for stride. Absolutely. So it's it's yeah. vital that we know our God. Yes. Personality. I'm this. I'm if, sorry. If, if we say that we are children of God, and we don't take the time to know our God, there should be some reflection of who God is through our life. Many times I've, I've heard people say, you Lord, you look just like your daddy, or you act just like your father. Well, when people see our lives, we should be a reflection of our heavenly father so that when people see us, they should be able to see him. And as we probably have heard people say in times past, Sometimes the only God that people will see is us. Well, in tonight, we're going to be talking about this man up. I'm going to ask this other question. Uh, uh, Brother Brown, you're you, you a old military man, been in the military several years. When somebody tells a person to man up, it's usually because that person that they're talking to is not doing what? Is not taking responsibility and doing in society, what society expects certain things of men. Mm -hmm. And I think when they tell you to man up, you're not feeling that obligation, or at least in their eyes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thank you for sharing. Don't you know that many of us, we have issues? And I'm not always saying bad issues, but one of the things that I hear a lot, especially in today's society, is why are the women doing so much in church? Why is it that the women are doing this and the women are doing that? Why is that they doing so much? And the truth of the matter is the women wouldn't be doing so much if the men would stand up and do what we're supposed to do. Let's just be real. This is this is uh this is their man in the house. Is there a man in the house? 
Uh, we can talk man talk, can't we? Oh, yeah. Because the reality is, is that a lot of us, if we were doing what we are supposed to do, the woman wouldn't have to. I don't like the thought of a woman got to go to fight for the men. I, I, hey, let's just be real. I, I, when I was a child growing up, my father and my mother would say this. Son, when you're with a young lady, you want to walk closest to the actual curve so that if a car were coming up that curve, you could be able to try to get out of the way but push that woman and make sure you're protecting that woman at all costs. I don't like, we used to call it back in the day, Elder Crane remembers, we used to call it jelly back men. That's right. Uh-huh. Men with no backbone. And God is looking for his men to stand up in his last day and do great exploits. But we can't do anything, first of all, that we don't believe we're capable of doing. Bible says it like this. God said he can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And unfortunately, this world and the society have become more and more divided in so much that a lot of divisions even take place in church. The last place where the people of God should be divided is in the house of God. Because the Bible says we are the body of Christ. We are the believers. We are those that have been called to do the work. And the Bible says we are his workmen created in Christ Jesus unto good works with God had before ordained that we should walk in them. God has expected us to be as the body of Christ and work together in everything. That's just being real. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, some very interesting things uh, in the Bible. Not going to be a lot of scriptures. Matter of fact, I'm only going to read one scripture. And today, uh, I'll be coming out of the book of 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter. I'm going to read one scripture. And a lot of this scripture is going to sound really familiar. But I want you to know this. Uh, what I try to do is anytime I'm talking or I'm listening to anyone preach or teach, I try to empty myself of my foreknowledge of what I already have about those scriptures so that God could give me the increase and fill me with more understanding from his spirit. You should know, like I know, the Holy Spirit can have us read one thing 10 times and get deeper understanding every time we read. That's how the Holy Spirit is. So in the 23rd chapter of 2 Samuel, I'm going to read this on verse, uh, actually, I'm going to read two verses, verse number 11 and verse number 12. And the Bible says this, and after him was Shammah, the son of Edgy, the Harite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop, where was a piece of ground full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines, verse 12. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines, and the Lord wrought a great victory. So today I'm going to talk about this individual named Shammah. Let me start by giving you a little background of what's taking place at this time so it'll give us an understanding. So when I start talking about Shammah, we'll be actually be kept up to par with what was going on. Now, the children of Israel were invaded by this troop of people, which was actually not a troop, but an entire, uh, entire group of people that were called the Philistines around 1250 BC. And these Philistines used to be called the Sea People. And the reason they were called Sea People or Sea Men is because they were so well known for navigating on the waters that they would defeat any of their actual prey or those that were predecessors against them. They would defeat them on the water. But then when they moved into land, they decided to move into the land of Canaan. And the land of Canaan is the same place as Israel right now. They went in by so much of a company of number and they took over the Southwest portion of Canaan and they became what were called the Philistines. 
Now, let me tell you this about these Philistines. The Philistines were known for their actual uh, skills in building iron with swords and shields and all these other types of things, garments, so that they would protect themselves at war. But the children of Israel, they were farmers. And so you think about it, farmers against these trained warriors don't stand a chance. So they came in hard and took over a lot of the land from the actual children of Israel. Now, David at this time is reflecting back on how he got into his position because now David, in, in the, as this story picks up, he's in his latter years. David has fought many of battles. David has had victories after victories, and David's been the king for years and years, and David's learned a lot of things. But one thing that David remembered is his mighty men of valor. David remembered that when he met these 600 men, because he had 600 mighty men of valor, he met them while they were fugitives running away from other tribes that wanted to destroy them. And they were in fear. But they realized if they would bond together, they would be very fortified and be very strong. Well, uniquely enough, all of these men, as they came together, their heart was won over to David, who became, who became their leader. And I want you to know, and I'll say this as a side note before I get into what I'm going to say about Shama. It is good. If you can find a man or a woman of God or whoever that is that can lead you in the ways of righteousness, you're doing well. Because we're living in a very deceptive time. And the Bible says that even if it were possible, that even the godly elect would be deceived. But God said, I'm going to shorten these days so that you won't have to be deceived. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to know this. These men bond together with David and begin reaping havoc on all their enemies because they began to make a stand for what God had given them. And I want you to know tonight, God is wanting us as men of God to make a stand on what God has given us. See, if we just believe that we just exist here, or we just, you know, we'll just go to church and we'll just do nice things. But if we don't get a chance to realize that we are warriors, we are the front line for God. And before anything goes down and the enemy does anything, the Bible says that we, he has given us power to tread on serpents and scorpions. In other words, over all the wicked works of the evil one. And the devil is always trying to find a way to infiltrate the people of God. And how he does it many times is he likes to deal with the weakest one. Whoever that is, that's the weakest. You know, we all have people that we look at and who's the strongest and who's not as strong and who's weak. And if you notice, uh, if, if you look at even the animal kingdom, when those lions are looking for they're, they're, who they're going to prey on. They look for that animal who's going slowly behind the rest of the, the rest of the pride. And they see, they're looking, it, who has a limp? Who has that, that slowness and looks like they can't keep up with everyone? Well, don't you know the devil does the same thing? He looks in the church. He looks in the body of Christ. And he looks for that person who seemingly can't keep up, doesn't want to keep up. They don't want to pray. They don't want to fast. They don't want to read their word. They don't want to be found doing things that the people of God do because we love God. They find always these excuses to make excuses to put God last. Oh, I'm going to be doing this or I'm going to be doing that. But God is looking for those that are going to stand up for him in these last and evil days and say, for God, I live for God, I die. It does not matter what the situation is, because if God be for us, he's more than the world against us. Somebody say amen. Let me say this, brethren. God is looking for us to make a stand. This man, Shama, he was working. He was working in a field of lentil, Bible says, as I read. 
And while he was working in this field, he's picking this lentil together in order to, uh, to, to gather these crop with the other people so that they could feed those that were less fortunate. Can I just break this thing down real quick? He was working in the food bank. <laughs> I hear somebody say, oh, Lord, wait, wait. You know, he, he didn't Amen. say the food bank. Let me, let me hide my, you know. He was working in the food bank. This mighty man of God was at a place where they could distribute food to actually the people that were less fortunate because it was something he knew. <laughs> and at least we forget. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, when I was a hunger, you fed me not. When I was a thirst, you gave me no drink. When I was in prison, you visited me not. And the people say, Lord, when did we do this to you? He said, when you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. I want you to know it does not matter the high positions because positions don't make warriors. What makes warriors is humility and doing the meager things. I remember when I first came to Holy Bethel 10 years ago, uh, other people knew me as Apostle Scott, and I had taught, you know, been teaching the Word of God at that time about 25 years, and people knew me of that. And I talked to Pastor Allen. And after hearing Pastor Allen preach, and then how he entreated me, I made up my mind that day that Holy Bethel is where I want to be, and that's where my spirit is being fed. And don't you know, I, 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 I talk, when I talked to Pastor, Pastor said, you know, uh, we're honored to, be, to have you here, Apostle. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said this, and Pastor, my witness, he couldn't be here tonight, but he's my witness. Pastor said this to me. He said, what, what is it that you really want to do for the Lord? And I told Pastor this words. I said, Pastor, I don't want to have to use my title for the people to know me. They can just call me Brother Scott. I got people like Greg Porter and those that have been at Holy Bethel, Elder Thomas, been at Holy Bethel over 10 years. And I started out at Holy Bethel letting people call me Brother Scott. I didn't want them to know me for my titles because pastor then tells me that's even better because when, you, when God lifts you up, you won't be known for your title. You'll be known for what you do. Don't ever be a person that you're more known for your title than for your work. Because the Bible says faith without works is dead being left alone. So I said, call me brother. Let them call me brother Scott. And then this is what the Holy Spirit gave me to say to Pastor Allen. I said, Pastor, will you please allow me to attack what's attacking you? You never know what people are going through. But I knew this much. If this is my leader, this is the man of God that God have assigned to my life. And don't you know, a pastor is assigned to watch over our souls. It's not a position in the world. It's not some type of thing that you just get paid to do. But you're assigned to watch over people's soul. And if I could trust them with my soul, I could trust them with my life. And if I love this man, as I said I loved him, then I want to attack what's attacking him because that frees him up. It frees the people up. We should be of such that we attack what's attacking our church, what's attacking the body of Christ, what's attacking our lives, what's attacking our wives, what's attacking us on any side. Because if God has given something to us, he's given it to us, not that it can be taken from us. Three things I'm going to mention, I'll be through. Point number one, don't be too proud to work in the menial areas for the Lord. Don't be too proud to work in the menial areas for the Lord. Bible says in Zacchaeus, I mean, Zechariah uh, 4 and 10, who have despised the day of small things? Don't you know, God likes to start out with small things. So that we know for a surety that if we get blessed, 
it had to be by the Lord. Proverbs 18 and 12 says, the first must be humility and then honor. Many times when God is calling the brothers or calling men and calling us up and calling us out and calling us to do a work for him, the very first thing that happens in our life is our life begins to go down. In other words, that's the humility. Because God can't use people that are puffed up. Because people that are puffed up will take his glory. And God said, I'll not share my glory with anyone. So when our life goes down, it's to deliberately make us to be at rock bottom. Because now we have no place to look up but, but at God and know that, Lord, it was you who delivered us. First Peter 5 and 5 says, God resists the proud. God hates the proud. He, even, he hates the proud so much, he even hates a proud look. You, you know what that looks like? Person proud up. I did this and I did that. Did y'all see how I prayed? Did y'all see? I, I prayed and every one of my words came out. I, you know what? They could have used what I prayed and put that in the Bible. Because that thing, I, mean, I felt that it was right there. Right there. In my, I, when I, yeah, Lord, if thou would bleed, blah, 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 blah. It don't mean nothing how good you pray if you don't have it in your heart. I'm going to say that again. It doesn't matter how good you pray if what you're praying don't come from your heart. Bible says that man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Thank you, Jesus. So here it is. David has these mighty men. And one of these men's name is Shamba. And Shamba is out in that field and he looks up this day with all these other uh, children of Israel. And he realizes we're about to be under attack because he can see all these Philistines and they're coming to him and they're attacking them with their staves, with their shields, with their spears. They're coming to them to attack them. And these are farmers. So what do they do? Every single one of them, they run, they run, they run, they run. And the, the Philistines came to them in a troop. And a troop is one to 200 men fully armed, fully trained to destroy the children of Israel. But Shalman knew something. Shalman knew that God was on his side. And the Bible said, that's why I call this man up. The Bible says he, he got to his feet and he stood his ground, one person. It does not even say what type of instrument he used but one thing we do know that all one or 200 men that were coming against him, he killed them all. Bible says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I want you to know this. And I, I think it'd be good just to point this point out. He didn't spare anything. Sometimes what happens when God is trying to deliver us from things in our life, we tend to pick and choose what we want to be delivered from because some things feel too good. I know it's not necessarily right, Lord, but it, you know, they, <laughs> yeah, you got to feel good. You know, I don't want to, you know, I don't to. God says, lay aside. Mm? This is telling us, you, Scott, lay aside every weight. And we're not just going to stop with the weight because we love it. Oh, let me stop with the weight. No. And the sin that so easily besets us. Lay it aside. In other words, don't focus so much on the thing that is besetting you more than the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, which came from the God that is above us. Don't focus on these, these menial things. My point number two was, give diligence to whatever that is you're involved in. In other words, be faithful. I look at all of you, and matter of fact, almost all, every single one of you I know. Almost every single one. And I remember when I first encountered you. And I remember that one thing that I enjoyed about each and every one of you is that you're faithful. 
It doesn't surprise me who's here tonight. I am not surprised, not at any and every one of you. I am not surprised because you've always been faithful. Doesn't mean that we didn't do everything, we, that we did everything right all the time, but at least we tried. And I know this much, if we continue to be together, Bible says one can set a thousand to flight, two can set 10,000 to flight. If we're working together, Bible says this, there is no good thing that he'll withhold from them that walk up right. If it is good for us to take the land, because it has been prophesied that Holy Bethel is going to be that premier church in Buford, Georgia, and God has given us the land. And just like he gave the land to the children of Israel, somebody got to stand up and say, we're going to fight to the death. Well, I'm not giving up the land God's given me. I'm not giving it up, and I'm not giving in. Shalma fights and destroyed all of them, and the Bible says, and a mighty victory was won that day from that one man. Gentlemen, we are that one man. We have to make up our mind that this is what I'm called to do, Lord. As I mentioned to all of you, I've seen many of you come in at times. I'm looking at Sean Irvin come in times and be doing, he would be doing the actual media, setting up stages out there in a parking lot, also getting all the speakers together and driving home and come back and have to take the stuff down that he set up. I've seen some, most of you, I've seen you at food banks, just like Shama. And while you at the food bank, you were there from the morning. I see a uh, uh, minister or Naco. I've seen uh, people like, uh, uh, Elder King, I'd see uh, other people that would be there at these food banks and then at different functions. I see it over and over. And I mean, like Elder uh, Thomas, faithful people that are going to be at service. Anytime you look up, you know, if there's a way for them to be there, they don't have to work. They will be there. People that God can rely on. Elder Crane, my God, man, you ain't been to church. You ain't been in Holy Bethel but about a year. You involved with everything. What is it that you all know that we need to know? Brother Brown, I see Brother Brown popping up in everything also. What is it that you, 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 you know that we need to know? Uh, Brother Damon Thomas, what is it? Anytime I look for that usher on that Sunday morning, I look around there, I see Brother Tom doing that walk. He ain't but five foot four, but he walked like he Hercules. I'm like, what is it that this man see? Hey, hey, but got the Hebrew, the Hebrew beard. What you say? He coming strong too. Huh? Elder Slocum, Calvin Slocum. I love to hear this man teach and, and pray because I know God will move. Then we have the Lavoca, the voice. No, none other than uh, Elder uh, Bellinger. My God. I love to hear Elder Bellinger. He just gets up there and he, well, you all know that we're just here to praise and to magnify the Lord. And so we're going to praise and magnify the Lord. And won't you help me praise the Lord? Next thing I know, he's saying what I want to say. And I said, my God, these men being able to do this thing and don't even realize it. And I'm not even going to talk about the, the, the man, the fingers himself, Dr. Jones, Anthony Jones. Brother Jones, he just as new as the day is on, but he plays like he's been there 100 years. And I look at him, we only talked one time, but he won me over with his personality and his love for God. What is it, what is it that we're doing to win the people over? And what about my dear friend, Dr. Gregory Porter? Porter have been the adjutant extraordinaire. Yeah, he, hey, look here. I didn't even know what an adjutant was when I first got here. Yeah, I seen him carrying everything and taking care of everything. And I'm like, what is this guy? And a barber. Somebody called him today the master barber. Yes. God has a way of doing things. I see my friend Rick Mitchell, Minister Rick Mitchell. Also, I've known this man 30, 38 years. And he's always been a man of God of integrity. But even my son, Minister Emmanuel Scott. This young man, when he was here at Holy Bethel, he was going through. And some of you prayed for my son. And I didn't know if he was going to get saved good. But your prayers prevailed. And he's now a minister in the church. 
preaching and teaching all over Wisconsin, playing all over the world. Why? Because we stuck together. We made it our business to make God our business. That's what we did. Brother Ryan, young man, love God, teaching, preaching. That's Brother Corey's son-in-law. I'm telling you, God have a great thing. And I see my dear friend and this young man named Eric Sutton. I'm trying not to cry, y'all. Y'all see me, I'm working it. Eric Sutton let me live with him for about four months because I was broke and I did not have a home. I did not have money to pay rent. This man went and cleaned out one of his rooms and moved his other daughter into a room with his other daughter. They were just little girls. And I never forgot that. That same man, Eric, Eric Sutton, now have a great anointing on his life and God is using him and God's about to raise him up even that much more in Holy Bethel, but it started out from small things. Eric was more, at that time, he was a businessman. But now he's a God businessman. And what I love about it, he never asked me for a dime. And Eric, even in front of all these brother, brothers, you have carte blanche with me, sir. If there's anything you need and I can provide it, I will get it. I'll find a way to get it for you. Because I love you, sir. Where are those that know that, you know what, we're better together? We have an honorable church. And as far as I'm concerned, we got the best pastors in the world. We do. I don't it, you may not, I don't care what you, you may think or don't think, but it doesn't matter. Because what it I what I know is what my truth is. And when you think that something is good, you're ready to fight for it. Men and brethren, I'll say this to you all, and I say this so sincerely. It's time for us to roll up our sleeves. We're in, the, we're in the 11th hour. It's time to fight the fight of faith. And the Bible says that Jesus is coming back to see if faith be found on earth. He should, he's looking for faith in us. We're the body of Christ. We're the church. I'm not allowing anybody to tear down what God has built up in me. Mm -mm. I want us all to become stingy with our peace. We don't share that peace with nobody. I'm not coming out. I'm not coming in. We realize that God is on our side. And if God be for us, he's more than the world against us. So in my conclusion today, and I just simply end by this last thing I'm going to say, attack what's attacking you. Attack what's attacking you. Because God has given us the victory through Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to go to war. I never was, you know, I wasn't a big fighter. I wasn't. But I didn't like people to push me. If you push me, now we got to fight. And my dad said this, son, if you got to fight more than one person, find a wall. I was like, why? Find a wall for what? Find a wall and stand against that wall so nobody can get around you. Now, the first one that comes to you, you deal with them so badly, they don't ever want to come back. That's how we should be with the devil. Yeah. Let's deal with this devil so he don't ever want to come back to Holy Bethel or whatever church that you're involved with or whatever Bible study you're involved with, whatever thing you're involved with. But because we're the people and the children of God, make this devil want to run. Bible says he's like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. Well, you know what? We are we are greater than that because we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. So in my conclusion today, I pray that I've showed you my heart and God's heart of what he wants us as men to do in standing up. Man up. That's the message for today. Man up. In these upcoming weeks, you're going to be hearing about a lot of the different things. Right now, we put together the men's council, and let me just reiterate who they are again. Some of you may not have been there. We have uh, Brother Greg Porter, who's part of the men's council. We also, yeah, that's right, if you'll raise your hand, or if you're on the, on the screen. We have Brother Chris LaFleur. He's part of the council. We have Brother Donald Brown, 
You've heard him today. He's part of the council. Please uh, remember um, uh, Deacon uh, Desmond Shockwell. Uh, he had death in his family. We want to pray for him before we leave today. Uh, we want to also remember uh, Deacon, um, let me see who else I forget. Deacon, oh, Deacon Malloy, he's our treasurer. And then also uh, Elder Darren Crane, who is our actual secretary. And he's the one who takes the notes and puts out the information. So again, and myself, Elder T. Archie Scott, uh, we are just, like I said, we're servants, one to another. And I pray that, like I said, we will take this word that's been given today and spread it and become new mind and start wherever the need is, let's go ahead and work it. Pastor asked us about four weeks ago, he said the food pantry needs help because we're feeding all these people. And don't you know, that is the will of God. The only thing is they got all the women, but barely a few men to carry the load. So brethren, I adjure you to let's get together. Let's go out and fix this situation. And wherever there's a need in our church or in our walking God or in whatever that is we're doing, just remember one can send a thousand to flight and two ten thousand to flight. Without any further ado, I want to uh, say this prayer because I don't want to forget for uh, Deacon Shotwell. He have had death in his family almost every month for the last at least about six months. And when the enemy is moving like that, uh, we want to counter that. We want to counter that with prayer. So just let's look into the Lord real quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we do pray at this time, Lord. First of all, Lord, that your will would be done, Lord, in our lives, Lord. And Father God, that you would, Lord God, extend this prayer unto the Shockwell family. He's one of us, Lord. He's part of the body of Christ, Lord. He's even part of Holy Bethel, Lord. Father, I ask that you would, Lord, strengthen his family, Lord, through this time of bereavement, Lord. Father, I pray that you would just give them hope beyond hope, Lord. Father, I pray that you would just comfort them by he, the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that his mind and that his body, Lord God, would be comforted, Lord. And Father, that he know that even despite these things that are in his life, you are still with him, Lord, and you are still the head of the body of Christ and the church Lord God, worldwide bodily. So Father God, we're asking that you would move on in this family's life, that you would make things better, Lord. And Father God, we would do vile, Lord, if you would just move even with the men of today, Lord, that have been under the sound of my voice, Lord. I pray that something has been said that resonates to you and that you will get all the praise, the honor, and the glory, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we do pray. The church say amen. Amen. <laughs> Well, without any further ado, I'm just like I said, um, I don't know. If, uh, Brother Greg, you, you have something you want to uh, say to the men? I know it was a good word today. We, we appreciate it. Hello, Scott, bringing the word on today and helping us out, man up. And uh, I just really enjoyed the whole message. And, I'm, and thank everybody for coming out and being a part of the man, man in the house. Appreciate you. Amen. So we will see everyone. We'll put out to everyone. Uh, Deacon Irvin, did you have something you want to share? Yeah, yeah just a couple of things, uh, gentlemen. Um, if, if, if you have not received any of the emails or any of the communications, if you don't mind, add your first name, last name, and email in the chat, and we'll collect it from there. So we definitely need to, we want to keep in touch with you. We know there's a lot of new brothers. You, you, you got to listen to what Elder Scott said. One of the things that he was saying is as he was going through his litany of everyone, he knows who he worships with. And that's very important that, you know, he, as brothers, we need to know who we worship with. We need to protect our, our, our own and we need to fortify the house, right? By knowing who we are uh, and who we worship with. Because I think that is vital to what we do in ministry and in the ministry that we are now a part of. So a lot of new faces, a lot of new brothers, we embrace you. You are part of this household. You are part of this family. And so uh, we want to keep you connected uh, yeah. with us as we move forward. And um, that's the biggest thing that I want to say. Let's get those emails. Let's make sure we're in communication with you. And I don't know if anyone else had any questions for you, Elder Scott. I think uh, we'd be remiss if we didn't give them an opportunity to ask you some questions before we close out. I know Elder Crane has something he wants to say. Well, go ahead, Elder Crane. 
I, I didn't have a question, but uh, I just what came to my mind was dynamic. Everything about this tonight was dynamic, and I'm 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 overwhelmed, brothers. You just don't know how blessed I feel tonight right. seeing these brothers. Amen. Hearing, yeah. hearing hearing the man of God give us strong marching orders to take us to higher heights and take us to deeper depths. And I've been knowing Elder Scott for years and years and years. And, and every time I hear him speak from when I was just a young pup in the gospel has always blessed my soul. But tonight it was like a double portion was given to him to give to the men Amen. that we would be strong. I want to encourage everyone on this call tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm taking names. I'm taking numbers. I got your names. I got that book. I got the uh, Excel spreadsheet from Brother Corey, and I'm working. I'm calling these numbers. Some of y'all emails, I can't understand your writing, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to call your numbers. But it's, it's, it's a lot of us. Some of these brothers that's on this Excel spreadsheet, they're no longer with us. And so they 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 don't want some of them didn't want to have nothing to do with us. Some of them don't want to answer. Some of them's numbers are no longer, you know, even working. So I'm moving, I'm dismissing numbers and names, but I need everyone to make sure you let me know who you are so that I can get this Excel spreadsheet together. I will keep in contact with you Amen. and keep you abreast of what's going on in this men's department, that we can be the strongest freaking men's department in the city of Beaufort and around the state of Georgia. We got strong men in this church and we got a strong pastor. And I tell you, I'm like Elder Scott. When I came into this church and I seen Pastor Allen, he blew my mind and, and it made me make up my mind that I wanted to go all the way in the Lord with him as my leader. And I'm through, I can keep on going, but I, I, I got to stop talking. But I love y'all. I'll get to emails. I'll get this information out to you. Let's be strong men. Let's be let, let's support not only the Zoom, but let's support the events that we have on the men's calendar. Yes. And every man that I see on here, when it's time for the men to get up and have the men's choir, I want to see all of y'all faces. <laughs> I want to hear all of y'all singing with me. And and Anthony <laughs> leading us, and me and Elder Bellinger up there singing. But we need all of y'all too. Praise God. Amen. 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 Was there anyone ahead here? <laughs> yeah, any questions at all? I, I didn't have any questions, but uh, I just want to just briefly say, like Elder Crane, um, thank you, brother, for stepping up to the plate and uh, manning up tonight and sharing what, what you had. And uh, I took a lot of mental notes, as I'm sure all the other brothers did. And, um, you know, it's and my mind kept going back, you know, what if Jesus had told the disciples to man up? You know, what would that mean? Wait a second, he did. He did tell them to man up. He said, follow me yes. and I'll make you fishers. And that's a call to action, to man up. He didn't call to women. He says, follow me and I'll make you fishers and men. Man up. And they did throughout their walk with them and even after Jesus died. So man up. I love the title. I love what you shared. And it's a call to all of us to, to stand up and to rise up to the task and to the challenge. I heard you, brother. I heard you loud and clear. Thank you so much. Amen. Bless you. So anyone else who wanted to say anything before we close? I just wanted to step in real quick and just say, Elder Scott, thank you so much for that word on tonight and such a timely word. It's always when you find those small nuggets in the word that it brings about, about an impactful word. Yes. And the personality of Shama standing in the gap to guard something such small as lentils and yes. fighting for it with his life, how much more precious is it for us to fight for the souls of yes. those that we serve and that we work with each and every single day? So I, I'm thankful for that word that you brought about tonight for us to man up and fight and fight for those that are around us. Yes. When we see one that's fallen, fallen short, Let's go out, grab them, pull them back in, bring them back into the fold so that we can man up and we can be the men that God has called us to be, that Amen. we can be the prophets, the priests, and the kings, not only within our own personal lives, but within the kingdom as well. Amen. So God bless you, sir, for that word. God bless you. Elder Thomas? I just want to say, if you got a strong men's department, you got a strong church, mm -hmm. and pastor, 
He always want the men to be strong and stand up and be men's, men's indeed. He want the elders to be elders indeed, the deacon to be deacons indeed. And whatever your position in the church, whatever your job is, if you don't have a title or anything, just be a man in church and participate and just help Holy Belt to be the best church that we can be. Help undergird our pastor and our co-pastor and just undergird the men's department and let's push the men's department to be the greatest men department on earth. Amen. God bless all of y'all. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Elder, Amen. Elder Thomas, are you sitting in heaven right now? Look at <laughs> that right there. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus! No, I'm not in heaven yet. <laughs> I just want to just uh, tell Elder Scott, man, uh, that was a powerful word. Praise the Lord. That's a powerful word. I just want to say thank you. You're right. I'm five full of a way to this Sunday when I come in with them new garments on. Yeah. <laughs> Where did them new garments come from? Oh, yes, brother. Don't forget that. This is uh, African Heritage Sunday. African Heritage Sunday. That's it, man. Where you get a load of me on Sunday? Amen. I am from Atlanta Zoom on when I come up in there. <laughs> Amen. I love you, man. I love my brother. That's too. why I don't have no problem putting my life on the line for that church in the security department yeah. and, and, and put my line on the uh, line for the pastor. That's because I love my church by any means necessary. Amen. Amen. Thank y'all. Amen. Amen. Brother Brown? Uh, well, I just want to say, first of all, let me just say... You, were, you brought a very strong message, Elder, and we really appreciate it. But I think one note I want to make, can y'all hear me? Yes. yes, sir. Okay, one, one note I want to make is when there is a need for help, feel free to call out. I had uh, one of my second cousins, 24 years old, committed suicide the, uh, two weeks ago, and he killed, it. He killed his wife, and then he mm. killed himself. Ooh. Down in Alabama, left a three-year-old child okay. for his grandparents to raise. So let's do a buddy check occasionally. See somebody down, just see what's on their mind because I think some of this stuff can kind of overwhelm them. Amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. Uh, Mr. Watts? Yeah, I um uh many of you guys know me. If not, every last one of you guys on here probably know me. I don't ask for much. I don't ask. I just do. And I just want to let each one of you guys know that's fine. Just do. Just do. Pick up and just do. Don't look for anything in return. Just do. There's a call that has been made that is needed. So I'm just going to even pick up and more and just continue to do. If we all do that, for sure, we'll see a change. Amen. Word, Elder, great word, and I thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Brother Renaco, I mean, uh, Vincent Renaco. Now you know. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> um, Man, I didn't even want to say nothing because you already know how I love when you teach um, and just love you as a person in general. Um, But yeah, the word was just crazy, man. And I'm driving home like, I hope I don't crash going too crazy. <laughs> Listening to this man talking about man up, and you talking about a familiar scripture, and I'm like, Shama, I had to go deep to remember that. I was like, goodness, yeah. this word is good. Good, good, good. Amen. Um, So, man, I just really appreciate it. Um, Thank you again. It was very, very inspiring, Um, very time appropriate. Um, So, yeah, man, you did an excellent job, and thank you for letting the Holy Spirit use you. Thank you. Minister, uh, Elder White, King. Minister White, Minister White, we need that bass voice in the men's choir. Oh, he can sing too, y'all. Praying. <laughs> they tell me that he can sing. Ellie, Ellie Craig, hold, hold on one minute. We got to let these brothers finish. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, Elder King, we wouldn't be right if we didn't have for you to say something. Uh, I was kind of, I, I enjoyed you. I just typed it in the tech and then. Um, in the chat that I, I i really did enjoy the message like i said it's very powerful uh, that call to action you know we really just have to do it like uh brother Watts said let's just be like nike just do it uh, let's just stand up and be the man we have to be and guess what it'll be easier if we all do it together 
And if I got your back, you got my back, we can we can do this thing. So you don't have to stand against the wall. You can stand against me. You can stand against each other. And we can uh we can do this thing. So you know what? We can pray. We can do whatever we got to do. And you know what? If we stand up and do it, we won't have to worry about what the women yeah. doing. We can push them yeah. forward as we move forward too. So they can they yeah. can take a break and sit back and we but we can keep going. So yes. it, we're we're at that point now where it's time to do something. And That's you know, right. not just talk about it and make a plan and, and how we want to do it. Don't worry about it. Let's do it. Let God lead us. Once we get into action, God will take care of the rest. Amen. If we're seeking him daily and we're, we're going after God, we can do this. So I, I just, like I said, I enjoyed it. It stirred up my soul. So, you know, it just like I said, I enjoy hearing you teach. I love hearing you speak and going back in all that history and getting all that, all that good information. Uh, that's something you do very well. And I enjoyed it on tonight. Like, so that's all I want to say. I, I, I was going to keep quiet, but you know, so great job. Thank you so very much, all of you. Uh, lastly, I just want to say this last thing. All of these great and these mighty men of David, they never asked David one time what he want them to do. They saw the need and they did it. So in the same token, as Pastor has said, there are sometimes God won't give him how to handle everything. So he's looking for his mighty men who see the need and will stand up and actually do great and mighty exploits, as the Bible says. That's all I had. Uh, we've already said our, our closing prayer. So uh, we will see everybody uh, prayerfully this Sunday. And don't forget to have a prayer tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. Uh, Bible yeah. study every Sunday, I mean, every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Minister, watch you and say something. Yeah, um, I just wanted to see if I can get everybody to acknowledge a dear friend of mine who took the time to come on tonight, Brother Wallace Edmondson. He's from the church that I used to go to prior to coming Holy Bethel. Okay. He's a severe, very good friend of mine and a severe man of God. So if I could get everybody to just acknowledge him and greet him and say hello and thanks for coming yeah. on, it would be Bless great. You. Bless, God you. Bless, you, Bless you. Bless you, Brother Wallace. God bless you. Thank you for coming. We don't see your picture, but Thanks for coming. Yeah, it worked. But it was good. Right. Okay, we got you. You want right. to give some words, sir? Brother Wallace, uh, did you want to you want to say something? Can hear me now? Did, did yes. you want to say something? Oh, no, I was just saying that I, um, I enjoyed the word. I appreciate you. I'm glad I didn't miss it because I could have. I would have tried to wait till I got home, got home in this Atlanta traffic, and it was a blessing to my soul. Thank Thanks you, sir. Me. Right. Well, we're, we're just ecstatic to be able to have you with us and definitely, you know, get a chance, like I said, if we get an opportunity, we'll make sure we get the word out and that uh, others, you know, we'll be able to invite others also and we'll be able to fellowship. So, uh, again, thank each and every one of you all for coming out tonight. And again, we'll see you all this Sunday. Love you all. Uh, have a good evening. Bye-bye. All, all right. Bless. Good night, everybody. All right. Bye-bye. Good, good night. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.